Hello students, today we are going to learn about meat, types of meat, selection of meat, spoilage of meat, methods of preservation of meat and cooking methods in meat. First of all, let us learn about meat consumption. Coming to the consumption of meat, meat consumption in developing countries has been continuously increasing from a modest average per capita consumption of 10 kgs in 1960s to 26 kgs in 2000 which will reach to 37 kgs by the year 2030 according to FAO projections. Quantitatively and quantitatively meat and other animal foods are better sources of protein than the plant foods except for soya bean. In meat, the essential amino acids like the organic acids that are integral components of proteins cannot be synthesized in the humans and are made available in well balanced proportions and concentrations when we consume meat. Apart from that, Plant foods have no vitamin B12 and therefore animal foods are indispensable for children to make sure that B12 is deposited in the human body. Animal food in particular meat is rich in iron which is of utmost importance to prevent anemia especially in children and pregnant women. In general as soon as the consumer incomes increases there is a general trend towards incorporating more amount of animal protein, particularly meat in the daily diets. Coming to learning of what meat is, meat is the common term which is used to describe the edible portion of animal tissues and any processed or manufactured products prepared from these tissues. Meat are often classified by the type of animal from which they are taken. Meat is the flesh and organ of animals and fowls. There are various legal definitions of meat in different countries designed to control the composition of products which are made with meat. The flesh of cattle, pigs and sheep is distinguished from that of poultry by the term red meat while the flesh of poultry that is the meat from chicken, turkey, duck, pigeons, guinea fowls etc. is termed as white meat. In addition to the common domestic animals, a wide variety of animals are eaten like deer, rabbit, bear, polar bear, seals, walruses depending on the availability and local custom as well as horse, camel, buffalo, goat, dog and rodents. Meat from non-domesticated animals is sometimes termed as game meat. Overall, by far the greater part of meat supplies is from four sources. They are cattle, pigs, sheep and poultry. But this may not be so in certain localities. The relative importance of these various sources of meat in the diets, they vary from region to region and in different cultures Many are rejected for various reasons in one culture are fully accepted in others. In the Indian subcontinent, beef is socially and economically perceived as being secondary compared to lamb, mutton and poultry, while the reverse is true in most of the industrial countries. Many western people abhor the thought of eating dog or horse meat which is relished elsewhere. The relative demand for organ meats compared with muzzle meat varies in different regions. The various kinds of meats are bacon. Bacon is the meat from a pig which is treated with smoke or salt and is often cooked in rashers. Beef. It is meat from cow or buffalo. Bush meat. This is meat of wild animals that have been killed for food. Chicken. It is meat of chicken. Crab. It is meat from crab which is eaten as food. Lamb is meat from a young sheep. Lean meat. It is a meat which has got very little fat content. Mutton is meat from adult sheep. Pork is meat from pig. Poultry is meat from birds such as chicken turkey, ducks, etc. Veal is meat from a young cow. 
venison is meat from deer wild boar is meat from a wild pig coming to selection of meat on how should we select the meat for purchase selection of meat usually depends upon various meat quality parameters fresh meat can be referred as a product which has undergone imminent post mortem changes following slaughter but has not been subjected to any kind of processing however fresh meat which has undergone freezing can be conveniently termed as raw meat some characteristics of fresh and raw meat need to be properly understood in order to achieve the best results while processing the meat and meat products coming to the quality parameters the first quality parameter is meat color this is generally the total visual perception of meat the hue chroma and value of meat color are based on the quantity of principal muscle pigment called as myoglobin and its chemical state meat color generally varies with species sex age and even among different muscles of the same species myoglobin content of more active species and muscles is higher than the passive ones typical color of meat from various species is generally different with different animals usually mutton and chewon are light to dark red in color pork is generally grayish pink in color poultry is gray white to dull red in color buffalo meat and beef is cherry red in color as the time of meat purchase brown color is usually associated by the consumers with meat that has been stored for long although it is not always true in order to prevent the formation of brown color fresh meat is usually packed in films with very good oxygen transmission rate coming to the second quality parameter of meat that is water holding capacity water constitutes about 76% of fresh meat the capacity of meat to retain its water during the application of physical forces is known as water holding capacity this property of meat has a special significance because it contributes to juiciness of cooked meat besides influencing the texture and color coming to the next quality parameter of meat that is marbling marbling refers to the intramuscular fat which can be visibly detected when the muscle surface is cut during thermal processing moderately marbled meat yields a juicy and flavorful product whereas too little marbling yields a dry and flavorless product excess marbling neither enhances the eating satisfaction nor desired in a fat conscious society coming to the next quality parameter that is quantum of connective tissue the amount of connective tissue in meat has a direct bearing on its textural characteristics the quantum of connective tissue per unit muscle does not increase with age and is not responsible for tough meat of older animals fresh meat having a high water holding capacity shows good firmness and tight structure pre slaughter handling such as long distance transportation and overcrowding of animals in trucks is also stressful to the animals this treatment causes shrinkage of muscular tissue and comparatively low dressing percentage therefore holding of such animals for resting and feeding can be helpful in restoring their depleted glycogen level however basic principle of feed withdrawal and adequate water supply for 24 hours before slaughter has to be followed for ease of evisceration and to reduce the microbial contamination of carcass especially in the intestinal contents coming to the next topic that is spoilage of meat and meat products meat is an ideal culture medium for many organisms because it is high in moisture rich in nitrogenous food and various degrees of complexity and plentifully supplied with minerals and accessory growth factors majority of spoilage microorganisms are contaminants which come from external sources during unhygienic bleeding handling and processing apart from these knives cloths air 
hands of workers also can serve as intermediate sources of contaminants. During handling of the meat thereafter, contamination can come from carts, boxes or other containers, other contaminated meat, air and human personnel. Because of varied sources, the kinds of microorganisms likely to contaminate meats are many. Molds of many genera may reach the surface of meats and grow there. Especially important are species of genera Cladosporium, Sporotrichum, Geotrichum, Thamnidium, Mucor, Pencilium, Alternaria and Monilia. Looking at the general types of spoilage of meat and meat products, let us look into different kinds of spoilages which we can see and perceive. The first one is surface slime. This is caused by species of Pseudomonas, Echinobacter, Moraxella, Alkaligens, Micrococcus, Streptococcus, Leuconostoc and Bacillus. Some species of Lactobacillus can produce slime. The spoilage microflora form a thin film on the meat which enables them to obtain nourishment from the substrate. The temperature and availability of moisture influence the kind of microorganisms that cause surface slime. Coming to the next spoilage type is changes in color of meat pigments. The red color of meat called its bloom may be changed to shades of green, brown or gray as a result of production of oxidizing compounds like peroxides or hydrogen sulfide by bacteria. Species of Lactobacillus or Leuconostoc are reported to cause the greening of sausages. Coming to the next spoilage, it is the changes in the fats. The oxidation of unsaturated fats in meats take place chemically in air and may be catalyzed by light and copper. Lipolytic bacteria may cause some lipolysis and also may accelerate oxidation of fats. Rancidity of fats may be caused by lipolytic species of Pseudomonas and Acromobacter or by yeast. The next kind of spoilage is phosphorescence. This rather is an uncommon defect which is caused by phosphorescent or luminous bacteria like photobacterium species growing on the surface of meat. The next spoilage is off odors and off taste. Taints or undesirable odors and taste which appear in meat as a result of growth of bacteria on the surface often are evident before other signs of spoilage. Soaring which is a term implies to a sour odor and perhaps taste could be caused by formic, acetic, butyric, propionic and higher fatty acids or other organic acids such as lactic or succinic acid. Soaring in meat can result from action of the meat's own enzymes during aging or ripening. Anaerobic production of fatty acids or lactic acid by bacterial action or proteolysis without putrefaction caused by facultative or anaerobic bacteria and sometimes it is called as stinking sour fermentation. The last kind of spoilage is putrefaction. True putrefaction is the anaerobic decomposition of protein with the production of foul smelling compounds such as hydrogen, sulfide, mercaptans, indole, scatol, ammonia and amines. It usually is caused by species of Clostridium but facultative bacteria may cause putrefaction or assist in its production. Generally, members of the genera Pseudomonas, Proteus, Clostridium and Alkaligens cause putrefaction in meat and meat products. The putrefaction caused by Clostridia is usually accompanied by gas formation. So after seeing the spoilage in meat, it is very important to learn about various methods of meat preservation. Now let us look into various methods of meat preservation. 
meat as you know now is a highly perishable commodity due to nearly neutral ph and high moisture content which is rich in nutrients various methods employed to prolong the shelf life of meat are chilling refrigeration freezing curing smoking thermal processing canning dehydration and irradiation coming to each one of these first let us look into chilling and refrigeration this is the most widely used method of preservation for short term storage of meat because chilling or refrigeration slows down the microbial growth and enzymatic as well as chemical reactions in meat storage of fresh meat is done at a refrigeration temperature of 2 to 5 degrees centigrade fresh meat is maintained in good condition for a period of 5 to 7 days at a refrigerated temperature of 4 plus or minus 1 degree centigrade processed meat products are also stored under refrigeration till these are finally consumed these meat products are less perishable as compared to the fresh meat the refrigerated shelf life of these products depend on the processing steps followed in each of the meat product the second type of preservation of meat is freezing freezing is a method of choice for long term preservation of meat it stops the microbial growth and retards the action of enzymes it has the advantage of retaining most of the nutritive value of meat during storage although a very little loss of nutrients does occur in the drip during the thawing process since drip is not possible in cooked meat products proper freezing conditions result in retention of most of the nutritional and sensory properties it is utmost important to wrap fresh meat in suitable packaging film before freezing otherwise meat undergoes freezer burn this abnormal condition occurs due to progressive surface dehydration resulting in concentration of meat pigments on the surface this discoloration in frozen meat due to sublimations of ice crystals is irreversible condition on cooking freezer burn meat is quite tough and lacks juiciness coming to the third method of preservation of meat that is curing Preservation of meat by heavy salting is an age old practice. It was applied as a thumb rule because refrigeration facilities were not available in the good olden days. Later, curing by common salt and sodium nitrite resulted in comparatively improved products. These days, mild curing of meat products is practiced mainly for specific flavor and color development. and preservative effects of curing ingredients which is an added advantage sodium chloride sodium nitrite sodium nitrate and sugar are the main curing ingredients nitrates and nitrites at permitted levels of 500 ppm and 200 ppm respectively act as preservatives by inhibiting the growth of bacteria especially clostridium botulinum These chemicals also retard the development of rancidity. Traditionally, curing of meat is limited to pork and beef. The next method of preservation is smoking. Meat smoking was known to man as an aid in preservation for a long time, although its chemical basis was a mystery. It is now well known that smoke contains a large number of wood degradation products such as aldehydes, ketones, organic acids, phenols, etc., which exert a bacteriostatic effect besides imparting characteristic smoky flavor. Preservation of smoked meat is also due to surface dehydration, lowering of surface pH and antioxidant property of smoke constituents. Curing and smoking of meat are closely interrelated and these days curing is usually followed by smoking. Of late, many liquid smoke preparations are commercially available in the developed countries. application of liquid smoke on the product surface before cooking imparts a smoky flavor which is very much liked by the consumers 
the next method of preservation is thermal processing unlike refrigeration of meat that slows or stops microbial growth thermal processing is a preservative method which is employed to kill the spoilage microorganisms two temperature regimes that of pasteurization and sterilization are generally used let us look into pasteurization and sterilization individually first one pasteurization pasteurization refers to moderate heating in the temperature range of 58 degree centigrade to 75 degree centigrade whereby most of the microscopic organisms present including trichinae occasionally found in the pork are killed incidentally this is also the cooking temperature range of most of the processed meats then the second category of thermal processing is sterilization Sterilization refers to severe heating at temperatures above 100 degrees centigrade whereby all spoilage microorganisms in meat are killed or their microbial cells are damaged beyond repair This heat treatment renders the meat products commercially sterile because some bacterial spores may still survive Such meat products have a recommended shelf life of 2 years in cans and 1 year in retard pouches at ambient temperature in tropics. However, exposure of meat to high temperatures impart sulfhydryl flavor in cans and modifies the texture also. Coming to the next method of preservation that is canning. Canning of meat is a process of preservation which is achieved by thermal sterilization of a product held in hermetically sealed containers. Canning preserves the sensory attributes such as appearance, flavor and texture of the meat products to a larger extent. Besides canned meat products have a shelf life of at least 2 years at ambient temperatures. conventional canning is done in the following steps the first step is preparation of meat and gravy carcass is deboned and 4 cm meat chunks are prepared meat gravy is prepared using condiments tomatoes dry spices and salt etc the second step in canning is pre cooking meat and gravy both are pre cooked at 70 degree centigrade for 15 minutes and this step causes the inevitable shrinkage of meat chunks and reduces the initial microbial load the third step in canning is filling filling in cans may be done manually or mechanically leaving proper head space as per the bis specifications levied by the government of india half of the gravy is filled first followed by meat chunks and finally the rest of gravy special care is taken to avoid trapping of air during this step the next step in canning is exhausting it refers to the removal of air from the container before it is closed and sealed it is necessary to minimize the strain on the can seams due to expansion of air during heat processing Mechanical exhausting usually may cause vacuum seal and the cans can be sealed. The last step is seaming. This is usually done by a double seamer machine. Then the next step is retorting or thermal processing. The product is subjected to high temperature under pressure for sufficient duration to achieve commercial sterility. After retorting cooling is a very essential step retorting is always followed by very fast cooling up to 30 to 40 degree centigrade to give a shock to the thermophilic bacteria finally the cans should be stored in a cool dry place preferably at a temperature of about 20 degree centigrade the next method of preservation is dehydration removal of water from meat concentrates the water soluble nutrients making them unavailable for microorganisms the extent of availability of water to microbial cell is usually expressed as water activity dehydration lowers the water activity considerably to prevent the growth of spoilage organisms 
sun drying of meat chunks as a means of preservation was practiced even in ancient days but rehydration of such meat chunks used to be very limited mechanical drying process involves the passage of hot air with controlled humidity but here also there is difficulty in rehydration we have another method that is freeze drying of meat which is a satisfactory process of dehydration preservation due to better reconstitution properties nutritive value and acceptability freeze drying involves the removal of water from the food by sublimation from the frozen state to vapor state by keeping it under vacuum and giving a low heat treatment the next method of preservation is irradiation radiation is the emission and propagation of energy in the material medium electromagnetic radiations are in the form of continuous waves and these are capable of ionizing molecules in their path these radiations can destroy the microorganisms by fragmenting their dna molecules and causing ionization of inherent water within microorganisms since microbial destruction of food take place without significantly rising the temperature of food irradiation is most of the times referred to as cold sterilization in addition to the above methods mentioned there are many chemicals which prevent microbial growth in foods which act as preservatives several organic acids have been generally recognized as safe for use as chemical preservatives some of them are citric acid propionic acid benzoic acid sorbic acid and their salts which are effective mold inhibitors acetic acid and lactic acid prevent bacterial growth whereas sorbate and acetate are capable of arresting the growth of yeast in foods then we have the last method which is called as hurdle concept Intermediate moisture meat products mostly depend on lower moisture content and consequent decrease in water activity for their shelf life. Use of high concentration of humectants including salt and sugar for desorption usually produces a disagreeable taste. This is true for Indian palate also. Leicester and Rodel in 1976 coined the term hurdles for parameters like chilling, heating, pH reduction low water activity enhanced pH use of preservatives and competitive microflora use of these hurdles or combination of preservation techniques in a balanced and judicious manner was named as hurdle concept and later the hurdle technology it usually does not allow a single parameter to affect the product characteristics drastically therefore hurdle technology based meat products provide a desirable taste juiciness texture and safety the last topic is cooking methods meat can be cooked by moist heat or dry heat methods we have different kinds of moist heat cooking methods such as braising boiling pressure cooking and stewing Moist heat cooking methods are used for parts of animal that are either low in fat or tough in musculature. Meat generally won't absorb water during moisture heat cooking. It will only exude water. The only thing that will make or keep meat moist is fat. Then we have the dry heat cooking methods such as barbecuing, broiling, grilling, pan frying, roasting and stir frying. dry heat methods are usually used for cuts of meat that are tender or delicate tender cuts of meat do not require moisture and long slow cooking let us summarize the entire topic which we have seen today first let us see meat which is defined as flesh of animals which is used as food in practice this definition is restricted to a few dozen of the 3000 mammalian species but is often widened to include as well as musculature organs such as liver kidney brains and other edible tissues meat is a nutritious protein rich food which is highly perishable and has a very short shelf life unless preservation methods are used it is the first choice source of animal protein for many people all over the world consumption of meat is continuously increasing worldwide 
meat spoilage leads to development of off flavors off odors often slime formation also is possible due to breakdown of valuable contents therefore it is essential to control spoilage and preserve the meat proper handling pre treatment preservation techniques can improve the quality of meat and meat products and increase the shelf life of meat thank you